Welcome to DIY Off-Grid Cabin. Today I'm going to be talking about how we built our off-grid cabin for $7,000. If you followed along on our build series, you've seen every step of the way when we built the cabin. We just finished painting it, taking advantage of some nice weather. It only took us a day. Our reason for building the cabin was we just wanted a project and we wanted some place that we could go and live a simpler life every now and then. This started as something that I came up with in my head and my inspiration was some of the shed cabins that you see for sale all over the country. The only problem is where we're located here there's no driveways and there's no way to get a shed type cabin up here. So I realized quickly that I would have to build on site and I was curious whether I could build something better than what you can buy for less money. So when I priced out shed cabins, they basically come with the exterior done on a platform and the insides, there's no anything. There's no insulation, there's no wall coverings. Some of them you can customize and get whatever you want. But in our case, I had a budget in mind, but no set spending limit. Everything that I tried to do, I tried to be cost conscious, but also I wanted it to be nice. The one big change that I made from a shed type cabin is I made a higher pitch roof. A lot of the cabins that you can buy have lower pitch roofs for two reasons. Number one, they're cheaper to build. And number two, they have to get here and if they're too tall, they won't fit. We built this cabin in approximately a month and we did all the work ourselves when we had spare time. That's a big part of it. The cost of labor was zero. So when you're buying a pre-built cabin, you're paying for that labor as well. After I had all the outsides finished, I totaled up my materials and I had around $5,000 into it. The only thing that I considered subcontracting out was the metal roof because I had never done one before. But I wanted to be able to say that I built the whole cabin myself. So I did it myself and I did a lot of research and I think it turned out great. All right, so we started with a foundation. Our foundation was four by four posts set in concrete. And the cabin is kind of on a slight hill that you can see on the porch here as it goes downhill. So we needed a way to, to level it out. Things that I would do over again, if I could, if I, if I did it over again, I probably would have poured concrete piers and then set the cabin on the piers because there is a chance that someday, a long time from now, the four by fours could rot in the ground, even in concrete, and that's gonna pose a problem. So you are less likely to run into that using piers. Another, we'll call it controversial decision, was using 24 inch spacing in the floors and the walls. And the reason I did that was for a couple reasons. Number one, it was simple and very easy to calculate everything. Number two, it was cheaper. There's less materials when you have to use less wood. Compared to a house, with 16 inch on center framing, I guarantee this cabin is way stronger than most houses built today. And here's why, because most houses built today, after they're framed, a lot of them, they will put like some sort of styrofoam covering over the walls. And they usually only block the corners, some houses. In our cabin, we have solid wood on the outside and solid wood on the inside. So all of that adds to the overall strength of the cabin. When you have wood walls instead of drywall, when you have wood siding instead of vinyl siding or metal siding, all of that adds to overall strength. Our windows are single pane windows. And again, another controversial decision. Again though, on a budget, you can quickly blow your budget just on windows alone. 
I actually bought these windows on Amazon and I'm really happy with them. They came with screens, they're brown, they match. And I can tell you that when we're in this cabin and we're using the fireplace, we usually have to open the windows. So as far as them not insulating as well as they could, they actually do a pretty good job for what they are. It's no different than living in an older home and your window is always gonna be a point where cold or hot gets through. But the way we insulated the cabin, it actually holds the temperature surprisingly well. For example, today it's about 60 degrees out. And when I just went in the cabin, it was about 35 degrees inside because it was cold overnight and it holds the temperature for a long time either way. Some of the materials I used in the walls, we use traditional bat insulation, paper faced. In the ceiling, we used poly iso hard foam insulation. And I actually got a good deal on this at a local Amish building supply company where they had a lot of overstock. And I got it for about half the price you'd pay at a big box store. So that was nice. And I had very limited room to work in the roof rafters because there were only two by fours. So I had to come up with the best insulation I could. The metal roof, I also bought at our local Amish building supply store where I, they've actually done work for me in the past. And this time I just bought the materials and did it myself. As I said, I'm pleased with how it turned out. Everything was a lot cheaper buying it from that building supply store versus Lowe's. So I priced out metal roofing and it was one quarter the price if I'd bought the materials at Lowe's. It just gives you an idea. You really have to shop around and use your local resources when you're building a cabin like this. So when we built the foundation, we insulated the floor with a Reflectix bubble foil, in other words. And we got that idea from another YouTuber, Boss of the Swamp, He's used it on multiple cabins of his and has had really good luck with it. And so far, I have to say, it does work good. Uh, even when it's been really cold, the floor stays warm. And the biggest thing that made a difference was when I installed the skirting around the cabin. And the skirting that I installed was not only for looks and insulation purposes, it's also a structural thing to add structure to the base of the cabin. I used 2 by 10 boards. We then put OSB down on top of the insulation. Then we put a membrane down meant to go under hardwood floors. And then on top of that, we installed real red oak solid hardwood floors and just put a light two coat finish without doing any sanding. And it gives it a much more rustic natural look. As far as heating the cabin, at first I had planned on using a wood stove, more of a log belly type stove that I had found at Tractor Supply. But I was at Royal King one day and I came across this stove and it was on a clearance because it was missing the legs. And I ended up only paying $150 for this Vogelzang Defender wood stove. And I built my own legs and welded them on. We then used our penny tile hearth if you watch that video, and I think that turned out really neat. It really adds a lot of character to the cabin. Then I just used this corrugated metal and spaced it an inch off the walls. It's kind of a heat shield, even though it wasn't completely necessary, but it also gives it kind of a unique look. On top of the fireplace, we used our Selkirk chimney system pieced together. And I was able to shop around and get a lot of this stuff on a budget. You know, the chimney can cost more than the whole wood stove. For example, this expanding double wall pipe here, I found on Amazon, used like new, which means someone bought it, opened it, sent it back for less than half the price of a new one. As far as a kitchen, we made the kitchen ourselves. For the most part, I bought these cabinets unfinished from Home Depot. And they're a lot cheaper since they're unfinished. And I just put a light shellac coating on them. And then the countertop I built myself out of leftover pine boards from the walls. 
the sink is very simple. It's just a stainless basin. If we look under the sink, there's a drain hose that comes out, runs into this bucket. When we're using the cabin, we bring fresh water supply, a seven gallon tank of fresh water that we can just place under there, put that hose in, and then this is a hand pump faucet. It allows you to have water. This cabin really is not set up to live in for a long time. There's no dedicated bathroom or shower in here. So it probably wouldn't be great for a long-term use, but that's not what we were planning to use it for. Had we planned to use it for that, we would have made some design changes. This cabin was designed more for looks and a cozy atmosphere with the high ceilings. If we had to live here, it'd probably be better to partition it off a little bit and make some better use of the space. We do have a bathroom though, and this is our privacy curtain room. And this is what we came up with, this little thing right here. So if we come down here and lift this lid, you can see we have a Thetford 365 toilet, which has its own fresh water supply, holding tank, and then while you're going to the bathroom, all you have to do is close the curtain just to have a little bit of privacy if you need it. So that was our solution to the bathroom in here. We thought about building an outhouse, but for the amount and the time that we use it, it's not really worth it. Let's put that down. Then it's your end table. The couch is a futon that folds out into a bed. So you have more bed space there. Have a queen size bed here. This is just a cheap metal frame that I picked up on Amazon. See, we built a little ladder to get to the loft. And someone could sleep in the loft. It might get a little warm in the winter with the wood stove going up there. But our plan is just to use it for storage. For lighting, we've been using oil lamps and also some battery powered lighting. Right now, the cabin is completely off grid, including no solar or anything. The only thing I might have done different would be to have pre wired it for low voltage solar power. That way, if I ever change my mind and want to have it someday, I could. It would have been very minimal cost just to run the wiring and have it in place. So for safety reasons, we do have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector in the cabin. I really like how the walls turned out. We picked up all this wood from the Amish uh, supply company as well. And the walls is a smooth, finish the boards actually reversible and I space them with this little space each board and then the ceiling is the reverse there it's actually a like a wheel brushed finish to give a little more texture for the ceiling so we've stayed here multiple times now just trying to enjoy it and get used to things and a couple things that I've noticed and advice that I'll pass on so far for anybody looking to do the same thing Wood stove choice is a big item. In our case, this wood stove, we're still finding the right mixture of wood and timing and air to try to get the perfect temperature. The wood stove in this case is designed for over a thousand square foot house. And this is 200 and some square feet inside of here. So it will run you out of here. There was one night where I put a log on the fire, put the air all the way down and we went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night and it was almost 90 degrees and you felt like you couldn't breathe, it was so hot. And I had to open all the windows and then I just let the fire go out and it got really cold that night. I shut the windows back up and then I woke up in the morning. It was about 52 degrees in here, so it was getting a little chilly. So we're still trying to figure out the wood stove. I ended up adding another damper to the top of the wood stove even though on the EPA stove, you normally wouldn't do this. It has helped to 
slow the fire down and give me better control over the temperature. So I think we could have got away with using a smaller wood stove, but this one was a great deal and it's definitely more than enough for even the coldest weather. So I'm pretty pleased with what we were able to get for around the $7,000 mark. And keep it in mind that $7,000 does not include the couch or the bed or the table, but it does include all the interior walls, the flooring and everything. And when I had priced out a similarly sized pre-built cabin to be delivered for what I wanted, it was around $7,500 for the same thing as this without the interior finished and without the nice pitch on the ceiling. So in my opinion, I saved a lot of money by building it myself. Now granted, it was a ton of work and I spent a lot of time planning this place out in my head and then more time drawing out plans on paper. So on the outsides, we had our overhangs and they were more for looks than anything. They do help keep water off the sides of the building. I hadn't planned on putting gutters on, but I may end up doing that just because when it rains hard and the water runs down and hits the dirt, it does splash dirt up on the side of the cabin and that also splashes water on the wood. And that's not good for really any, any building. We don't have a foundation necessarily to worry about, but it might be a good idea to put gutters on it. And if I do put gutters on it, I'll be installing some sort of rain catchment system so we can use that water for things at the cabin. The one thing I did install was this solar battery powered light. And it's really nice. It was only $10 at Walmart and it charges up the sun and then has a motion sensor. And it's very, very bright. So that at least you have a little bit of light at night if you need to come outside to do something. It works really well. So the last thing I'll talk about is the paint finish. So we just finished this yesterday and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, even though the siding looks like T111, this is actually LP smart side. And if you watched the video earlier when I, we built the cabin, you'll see that it's like a pre-primered finish system that's actually weather resistant from the factory which is nice. So I did. I wasn't able to stain this and make it look like a traditional, I guess you'd say cabin would look. Uh, but what I ended up doing was using a 100% acrylic finish and we used the Bear Premium Plus that you can buy at Home Depot. And I'm super thrilled with how it came out. And this is a satin finish. On the corners for the trim, we used a PVC composite type material, which is 100% waterproof and will never rot. And I wanted a finish that I will not have to mess with for a long time. I do not want to have to paint this every few years. So I wanted something really durable. And I think we found it in this Bear Premium Plus. I'm really happy with the look. It has the perfect sheen to it and how it was finished. And then we color matched the front door to the roof. I went back and forth whether or not I wanted to do more of the trim in the green color as well. But I like it all brown. I like the way it looks. You can still see the definition of the window trim. And it was much easier just to paint it one solid color. All right, so thanks for coming along on our journey for building our off-grid cabin. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe I can help you out with. If you're considering something like this, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the video, be sure to like it. I'll have a link down below to the playlist for all the cabin uh, build videos, just in case you didn't see them previously and you want to watch something specific. You can watch all the videos of every step of how we built the cabin. So thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later.